Hello and greetings everybody. This is Dr. Tavo DRC. Welcome you today to Freedom Fellowship. That's the basic name for what we are calling the online online fellowship.us, but really to have more of a Sabbath time apart in the Lord, wherever you are, wherever you park yourself. I'm closing out this rather amazing and random season, very random season of you know, many years, just studying the different things I was learning as a prophet, as a person who is in the body of Christ in the houses of God across the USA, all colors, many times. I was raised by a capable father and mother and a capable, strong mother, but the father was the head of the home. He was the pastor. M. Kimball Johnson Jr. from the Deep South. And because of them, I want to honor them today because we're starting a new phase. This is the random look. I'm going to sort of close it out with the usual uh, small screen. We have now Pam. We have other many people that will be featuring, hopefully. And we're going to upgrade our appearance because this has been a season and a sign unto many of the many kinds of people, diverse kinds, dysfunctional, not who are really into wanting to know the Lord. <coughs> to represent the Lord and to show up around. Somebody turns on their their cell phone, their um, <coughs> TV or whatever, computer. So we're here I'm going to teach my go-to psalm from the last seven to ten years that the Lord gave me for this part of the leg of the journey. This is the end of the journey. I want to go back to look a bit more professional. I want to get down and get that, you know, um, the the, pack, the backdrop, the, the weight loss, <laughs> but when you're on the lamb, when you're, I'm not making excuses, I'm saying there's some things that you do yourself, of course, but the idea is that in this last season, last move of God, I was, I learned how we have to be careful if we get, you know, grow. I was typecast. I was maligned, I was stood up, I was big bossed, and I was, wow, tried to pull the wool over, you know, certain things. Snake in the grass, dysfunction, which drove me to study myself, is it coming from me? These were not dark skin. We're not giving anybody of any color any perfect past, but for me, this when this kind of person, visage, visits, because they're new in town, their professional strength ministry raised among men, you know, they've got the gift of birthing something in the new move, but it isn't clear. It could be a Martha Stewart type of female, which is she could be taken off, looking tired, just gone through auditing or something big and her or tragedy and no bodyguards are there and she just show up, you know. It could be a well known leader of a totally different kind of body type, a female such as the former premier of Israel, gold in my ear, you'll have to Google her. She was raw boned and very international. Both of these people are humans first. I represent humans, but not just this, this kind, also all colors of humans, all females and males. This is to you to hear God, there's an identity, there's a need to um, <clears throat> nail the prejudice, the bias, the stereotypes, the easy on me, you know, there it's a dysfunctional thing in Christian leadership that we're going to try to remedy by teaching with our new school teammate university, which I already am on our other rumble, like two rumbles, trying not to grumble on rumble, but um, we were proving and waxing pretty strong, but not targeting humans on the uh, rumble.com apostle Tavo, lowercase letters. And it's sort of been representing this psalm I'm going to teach today and encourage you, all of you to keep up good cheer because even though I'm beginning a new season, a new day, that we are going to go back to what we had before. And I I really hate to say it, some of, some of these ministers, if I, including black people and white people and around the world, if I did not know after being safe, healed, quickened by the Spirit, knowing different moves of Holy Spirit, if I had not been through what I have seen, which represents David being pursued by word curse management, Saul, spirit, accuser Saul, and also demonic targeting, I pray that it is not a prophetic living for any of us 
in this future church time, the time period. And it already looks, it looks similar to what we're seeing now. And I was raised with self-control. I was raised by normal people going way back who had self-government. You didn't talk about it. You didn't think, oh, you better be, you know, no, no, happy. But it was like you had a strict, you know, before you knew you have self-government, which is self-respect because you're, you know, self-government. But then you are also discernment of boundaries. You have a basic wisdom, which is like the holy fear of the Lord, respect. Turns out there is a scripture for that. As, uh, Ephesians 5.21, the non-big boss community. Ephesians 5.21, and I even researched it. Paul writes, and he says to all the churches from the offices, the elders, the staff, the lay, the married couple, everyone, Ephesians 5.21, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. Now see that big word is submission, the targeting word that I found. I found fully because God didn't want me to be spared what they do to people, many, you know, this group, this type of spirit. And so I've researched it, you know, I didn't, you know, uh, it can go from Wiccan occult, twisted, you know, like twisted Wiccan, get its way, conniving, back, orchestrated, subliminal. It can go, but it's plain old, dull of discernment. I've seen all women, all women are, you know, males and females, black and white, authoritarian. It can be that way in the black people. I'm not talking because everybody, you know, I'm just sent to know it for this crowd, basically, because they have a lot of influence as well. So we're, to sum it all up, even though it was wear and tear, and I want to identify that and relate to how I've lived. You know, many have lived, many have lived not here. This is a remnant voice for others maybe, who've been through a cult, who may not know what it is, who might go through it. You need a, you know, somebody to talk to about it. But it is a, it's a reconnoitering. Holy Spirit, divine appointment, just being sent to reconnoiter. That's sort of a um, military term, but I'm not a militarist. <laughs> That is a, a government term, a governing term, authority, that you are sent by an office, your superior, usually, to go spy out the land, like the promised land and the ten spies who were commissioned to go spy out the promised land of Canaan. Well, <clears throat> a lot of them, in that group of ten, the first ten, they were all chicken, weak. In other words, they were human. But they came back and said, oh, the, we can't take those giants. Those giants are too big. Those giants are everyone calling everybody adultery. Everybody calling everyone uh, a maverick. Everyone's calling everyone, uh, you know, the dressed down people. They're out, you know, there's no good. They're slobs. Everyone's, oh, yeah, we got the, there's no witchcraft. We just know how to read your mind. There are a lot of big words we learn that are a giant network that are a giant fascinating and beautiful you know somewhat beautiful until you get into that and you know the you discern what really is going on from the top down and because of that we cannot go now to where i would love to go and usually go when they get in the holy spirit deep things because of the targeting against women i presume i never is it the woman they target this the it the it that's how i feel it is it is very dysfunctional it is very unusual because I can go to all these, let's say African American churches, Hispanic churches, I guess Asian churches where they're not legalistic, white churches, where they're safe churches, where they're Holy Spirit with might and power more, but they don't have this unusual Levitical patriarchism doctrine. So when you hear this new step, which will all try to be very very positive and powerful, teaching on the Holy Ghost, teaching on anything in a churchish form, like a, a gathering form, and a winsome gathering, but we'll make points, whatever God says, this is a prophet, this is a child of Issachar, a present day word, you know, but I'm going to try to pave the way from here, because we're in the old look, the usual look of David, <laughs> people on the lamb from the system, from the um, religious targeting in the dysfunctional from search turn away the remnant that's why i'm here i'm representing everyday people and they go through pain and you need that's why we need to know how to make our god's houses safe 
for all kind of people. But when there's no fear of the Lord, this is what I found. They project accusation from the top and the, you know, they project accusation because they've never met anybody except their own crowd for this narrow little group and they're sheltered and buffered from reality of real people, a lot of them. So we don't want to go backwards, but we're making it plain that today, even though I discussed Psalm 132, which has been my go-to psalm in the wilderness, fleeing from word curse, persons that say they're big, strong leaders, but they are whelp every time, or whelm, female counterparts. They are every time. Nobody reads Nobody in this, when they do, if they do that, which is dysfunction, they do not discern the body, this part of the body of Christ correctly, and they target you and go after you without speaking. It is like spiritual, or it is condemning murder. It's a murderous spirit. So I can go many, you know, I'm going to try to write this down to make a training manual with Pam. And I'm submitting this as Selah. If, you, if you're one of them, you'll think, oh, you know, she's offended because that, she just doesn't know because what we know is more. We know more. No, 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 no. We know real people. <laughs> We've been around. We know when we're divine and we know when we're, you know, there is a group, there is this teaching for the body of Christ that we are peculiar people. Well, I'm peculiar, you're peculiar, we're all, but maybe in our own kind of network, we're, you know, but I look at the teaching of 2 Kings 6.12 in light that this might be the abuse, the power control uh, behind this. And there is such a teaching in the unusual side of the prophets in the Old Testament book of Acts, you know, that's Holy Spirit. It said that Elisha, the prophet Elisha could hear, he heard what the king said in his chambers. And from what I believe, the diviners, the occult diviners, think they are the king prophet Elijah and that they have entitled to work me conjure figure out and probe me and I feel it something is nasty in that that is works let me explain it right off the bat in case you are in this ministry or been around it there is a difference between working it and God dropping it in your spirit by his grace because you have a pure heart you're loving you're not against anybody so I teach that because I have it. Runs, you know, many people have that. They just don't know why. But out of the blue, they'll just know something, or they'll see words, or somebody's face. You might hear something, and also I feel it. If people pray against me, let let me know. I feel pinchers or probing, which is God's warning, protection for me. And I bind it, and I I put the blood of Jesus. Oh, here's what. Okay, I'm online, and a lot of these people that target are know me. And I'm not afraid of it. But nobody will talk, so you got to explain from over here, because they'll never lower themselves to be relatable. That it's, it's just pride. It's just this weird thing in many places. The cult in thing with the LP, occult, witchcraft. All right, so, so if, I'm, if, I'm, if I walk in and, and they look at me and pass over me, I think, that's right, you need to discern people. You know, God will tell you, watch out or don't watch out. But if they send people and orchestrate repeatedly to scan, you never smile, and you know it, where you just study them. That's all I know a lot of it. All right, so this could lead into many things like abuse, like witchcraft, like warfare, targeting, defiling God's people, new visitors, apostles, unawares, angels, mothers in Christ, little kid, big kids, you know, ministers, which is touching God's anointed. All right. Let's go down the list. All right, so if you think, here's how Elisha did it. Elisha. I picture him walking across the field or something. Here he was just doing his usual day, and he walks across the field. All of a sudden, whoop, in his spirit, oh, he heard in verse, you know, in a spiritual sense, he could hear or he saw the words written what the king was saying in his chambers. Why? It was like a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge granted by grace. Right? Free. Not working. Why would God do this? Because it must have been he was a prophet. People who are attuned with the Holy Spirit, and there weren't many in the Old Testament, so they had the 
you know, more famous, Elijah, Elisha, all them, they would hear it from the Holy Spirit, the rare few, but today a lot of people can do this in the Book of Acts crowd. Now a lot of people think they are Elisha <laughs> if they're not careful. All right. So it's humility, it's love, and it's sacrifice. And you have to be careful you do not uh, have a, an ego that you're practicing witchcraft, targeting with your gift, then you're a false prophet, you're a false prophet. <laughs> okay. So it's by grace, just like by grace are we saved, not of works that any person should boast. So if you think we are working it, that can mean that you and your people, your few people, your big crowd would say, oh, we are sharpshooters. We, we do it well in this group. We are known for it. So therefore, we will continue and breed that crowd. That's works. That's satanic. That's false. And that's it. That's what we've had done. It's what's dysfunctional and also unsafe, unholy, defiling does it just come it's expected it's all around the world where the colonial whelp have their nests and other people too you can have other stuff there's a realm of the spirit just like there's a realm of worship music there's a realm of uh, authority there are realms that are invisible and you know they're good bad and stressful you can have realms of prophecy that is true joyful peaceful not targeting then you can have your false doctrine, your Ishmael in that, which is a lot, it is this, and a lot more to be said, but I won't go into it. It's just the days we're living in. There are people that can have a different, like maybe from the darker uh, skin people, you can have the, the voodoo type thing. I'm talking about plain old defiling people for wanting to go to church. That's where we're online. Many people, we feel more peaceful getting away. I also am, I felt this morning that I've lived like in the spiritual sense, learning the subculture, which I will describe and I've taught already, I'll mention it, but I won't go into it. The subculture lines up with this group, and that means humans that say they're born again, most of them say they're saved, most of them say a lot that they are prophets or not. Skilled. Their hearts are off, they're dark. So you can have people that are not in that. It could be Christians that are abusive. Undel you, know. you can have people that are saved and they think they are just perfect, but they have a something happened before. They are dysfunctional and they are abusive, spirit, emotionally, whatever this is. All right. Subliminally. So when I think of this, I think, go, I go back to my father, mother, sisters, brothers, all my relatives, all the friends, all the board members, all the people, black and white, who never have done that, were caring, pe caring people. And I want to repopulate that with the fellowship, the online fellowship, and then gatherings. There are no members. We are not into members. If you sign on to volunteer to, to help or be on a staff eventually, of course you have to be, it's like a member, not control, but you're loyal, you show up and all that, but we've had too much fancy-dancy prophecy, weird stuff to know that there's too much slave and master or occult top control or need to be over everybody, the need to be over everybody. And that could be non-famous, it could be very famous, and it could be people who want to be famous. That's really the, the, you know, we think we're the next big one, so this is the gamut that this person who does teach prophecy and knows prophecy and lives it every day with the Lord with joy and an apostle sent a sent one a sent messenger Galatians 6 excuse me Galatians 1 went into revealed and fashioned and shipwrecked and morphed into it over time not accomplished it by grace barely you know enjoying it though you know we're only faster like a Noah type for anyone who needs this you know to know you can still uh, uh, you're living in the process God's process, but you're making, because it's Him, and you need Him to really do it, it's the progress that He reveals and keeps you through the fire in, which is His glory on the other side. So it's His progress, His process with His progress, big, never much, 
for whatever. So we've come through the low, you know, which is right. We've come through that. We've been blasted. We've been, you know, a lot of things have gone on. For the, which go on worse around different parts of the nations. I think of the persecuted church. I think of all these people in slavery. I think of all the people in trafficking. All right, so might as well not suffer and think you're pitiful. You just are poor. You just think, hey, we're counting the cost because we've lived and it's joyful. God at rest, thank God. So I'm saying that because there is a coming, you know, there's always the next group and there are people that are on land that maybe have never been they think we are t untouchable. We've never been touched by this. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. When the last thing we watched, we were sent to see, not knowing what I saw till later, but I thought, what in the world? These are Christian. What in the world's going on in these cultures now? What in the world? These famous cultures, and they're so what gifted. What in the world? Because we're not Baptists. And so we are trying to make it plain there is not, it's not just about you and your kind of culture or your people, famous or not. This is Holy Spirit's move and it's pro anybody. Book of Acts, not for Book of Acts. We know why you don't want a Book of Acts. We're for brown skin, white skin, vibes, tribes. I like diverse. I love people if they're sent. We're not drumming up the business. We're letting God reveal and send me the right folk the right not poor me folk but the right not dysfunctional folk but the right kinds of family feel quality joyful folk you know mature folk uh, I think it's about a unity to realize that it is all supposed to be one look <laughs> or one type so we want to bring in doc you know men and women all these people that are it when it's time but it's, it's really a community. It's about a community, so a network. I don't think Paul or Jesus, my opinion, knew the damage that would happen. They probably knew, but they didn't train it to ha They didn't want it to happen. They trained community, not cult. They trained community. Paul did especially co community, not ownership. Not you got to go. You got to come every Sunday. You got to take notes. You can't go anywhere else. Uh, that's what's out there, <laughs> okay? And what it woke me up. Uh, even Baptists don't think that way. Even Baptists, um, I, at least the Baptists, they were not fundamentalists or anything. I didn't know anybody that is denominational that thinks that the people are supposed to be, uh, that their people are slaves or property in ministry. And it's free will. It's, it's like, it's a democracy if you go to church or not. But all the rules, all the Pharisees, all the all the watchers, all the you know accusers, you know you're not, and all the goody goody at the people who do like to go, uh, putting pressure on him. Where do you go to church? It's your fault. No, it's your it's your choice. Romans, excuse me, Philippians two twelve. Work out your own salvation. I would say right now the backstory matters to me. Your backstory, if you've had it good. You've had it special. You've had it no waves, no bumps in the road, no dysfunctional. You've all been surrounded. That is a, quite a difference with attitude, with the fear, of, no fear of the Lord. And it is also going to be milled. It's going to be worked on by the Lord. Because I found that the rising group, precious saints that they are and aren't, are, are really clueless about certain portraits of the Christ that are in the Bible and true valid teachings of Jesus that are not Solomon's that have not arrived that have not you know their quality but listen there is the Isaiah 53 suffering saint which I believe this was sent to do on behalf of those that are so lost in their own self and gifting and thoughts that they don't understand how to really radiate show the love of God abroad in their hearts because they are now a dichotomy of false religion superior bias club ownership and then targeting new visitors if they don't meet the criteria and the true motives that they really are nice you know can be nicer so it's a mixture because of the bigness of everything in this world we live in we're teaching let's go back to balance the other one would be, and I could teach a whole scripture in all this, but I won't. 
Isaiah 11, 2 and 3 for ministry and prophets and the book of Acts, moving in the gifts and speaking in tongues. All right. If you're teaching at the leading of the Lord how to build unity without compromise, how not to scare anybody, freeze anybody if they think differently, which they can, they might do, and that's, you know, you have to know how to do it a bit to let people hear God. You could feel pressure. Otherwise, if God's worked it on you as your natural, it, he worked it on me. So I can teach knowing people that are really horrified at moving in the gifts, the thought of speaking in tongues, long worship, prophecy. I know that, and I know some of the reasons why, and I know that my daddy, who is not a, what do you call a tough hardliner, a cessationist, meaning the book of Acts, the book of Acts um, stopped after the apostles died. He, in college as a Baptist, a gentleman, <laughs> and a fun father, fun daddy, he was taught that the book of Acts stopped. And when I did in college, later my sister and mother did, and my mother got healed of a picture with her ulcers. Now let me go over with all that. And I'm going to give you scriptures, but then I'm going to tell you I've had a break in the spirit from this big boss, dysfunctional and evil, targeting, defiling and humility, you know, just, whoa, Isaiah 5.3, can't tell evil good, evil, excuse me, Isaiah, whoa, 5.20, they, these called evil good and good evil, I've seen it, and we'll talk on Isaiah another time because that was a thing that was blocking God's people from the Holy Spirit was the leaders in little g gods, false religion and vanity. All right. It's been long suffering here. That's why you get to know joy or I mean you get to know the Lord more and whoo or else you just don't want to do this. I mean I love doing it, but it's a God's call. With that said, I've had I'm gonna give you scriptures of the subcultures I will teach later and that would be the Beware of the strange children. You might know them now. You might even be with them, or you have married to one. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's all right. Beware of the strange children. Psalm 144. Keep your children away from the strange children. A huge subculture, micro and mega. Big boss, but also this. It says you will not prosper if you deal with the strange children. I didn't know this. Now I have proof. You know, live with. It. I prosper with the Lord, though. I'm really. <laughs> I roll with it. You know, God's mercy. It says, Beware the strange children, verses 7 and 11. They have mouths that speak vanity, things that do not take to eternity, won't matter. And they have a right hand of falsehood. That was the learning curve of false prophets. I just didn't realize false prophets is gianter than the words they, than the Bible teaching. Not, that could be, I don't mean that as an etched in conjury, but right now it feels like I didn't know that even though you can have false teachers teaching false, I think I know the biggest thing. Even in authority, sin, Jesus is not the only way, or that you don't need Jesus, you know, many things. But it says, Matthew, Jesus warned in red letters the Christian leaders who were moving in the book of Acts, Holy Spirit, that they wouldn't go to heaven. He said, many of you will say, I'm just saying it to let people know that they better be careful, you know, that we're watching, God is watching, he's watching all of us. It says, many will say when it's too late, many will say in Matthew 7, 21, 23. Many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out devils in your name? Didn't I do signs and wonders in your name? And he'll say, out from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. In Strong's Concordance, that means false authority. Whoa, watch out for who does what, who knows who, and what they do with their underlying, you know, their false authority. Some are insecure, some are well-meaning, some are like over-the-top of cult and cult. Enough said of that, it can't go on. All right, so then you have the people that could be everywhere. The uh, 2, Timothy 20, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26, it says, For the leaders, all of us witnesses, you know, lay to minister with meekness, humility, to those who oppose themselves. Per adventure, they would take themselves out of being held captive by the devil, their choices, their 
Many times it can be arrogance because they were hurt way before you met them. They have rage or they have control issues because they've not forgiven bitterness. All right, or they hate themselves. That could cause it. Too much to go into. So that would be, and then the final topping it off for you to get out, get your studies going, train your people, is the Second Timothy. 3, 1 through 7, 7, 1 through 7, read the Amplified 2, and the 1 Timothy 6, 5 warnings to the last day church in the prayerless times that you have the choice to flee. So the remnant knows their choice. That's why church has gone down, maybe. So, so there's the, apost ap excuse me, the warning of the apostasy, which is why. I mean, we, we're in the last days. There is apostasy. But there's not just the apostasy. I'm out here for 45, you know, 48 years almost. And I mean, I love it. It's kept me joyful, young, and at heart and everything. feeling. But you have now that you have to know to really critique their doctrine and their authority and their how they uh, react to people, respect, fear of the Lord. And then it says, you have God's escape clause from anybody who's beating you down and saying, you know, you're not fellowshipping with the saints as some have. You're not under authority. You're unsubmitted, not under submitted to a local pastor. That is the big, you know, I could go out there and I could be dying from horrible stuff that I just don't tell. And I could be dying and they pick you as an evil one that she's not. Do they care? It's like the compassion fatigue piece. They, that's why I'm representing the many. The many that have fled or just go there and suffer anyway because they love God. So I'm being very strong to make this known. It's the flesh. It's poor me. It's discernment of spirit. No, it is false. T something wrong in that. Disrespect. So you have to train God's people defensive. Their freedom in Christ, if they really know, and they pray, they're forgiven, they're not mad, but they really know it is abusive and it is occult, it's wrong authority. Whoa. And it is eternally wrong for the leaders and the people who do that that are commissioned to that, and it, it, and it's like the strange children. Keep your children away from the strange children. This is part of this whole big conglomeration in the United, in, in the church, black, white, and brown. More late. Enough said. Let's go to the good part. As I heard, you know, when you come, what, when you go into a season that is very dramatic, very stressful, and you're a lighthearted person, you meet people all around that are light, you know, that are fine people, and they're not, it isn't them, you sort of go through that, that change, it all comes back for a while, and then you realize you're being delivered out of it to the new season. Well, that's what's been going on pretty much for a couple of months. And I have a perspective, because I know it's going to be really good, but we're all in a weird place. Speaking from a remnant perspective, my opinion. So I was, you know, going through the, the, ang the, whatever it was, remembering some stuff, which makes me feel compassion for all these people that I've met and that go to this around the nation, little tiny areas, big areas. And out of the blue, the Lord just started giving me, I remember when I used to go to Florida on assignment in the 90s and new music had just come. I'd never heard of it at the time. And it was refreshing and it was positive, it was light. And it was the song especially. It was before all this, before all this late 90s stuff on. Late 90s on, whatever happened. But it was down in middle 90s. I went there many years to go back, you know, learn the curve down there, experience it. But it was shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, Darlene Check. No, you know, we don't, all these people, it seems like a lot of stuff goes on when they get really big, big, big. Nothing. This is the fresh beginning. And I represent this as a fresh new start. I do. So when I heard shout to the Lord, I am a musician, supposedly, for wanting that back. But I think, oh, it's not complicated. It's not so complicated. It focuses only on the Lord. It's like, oh, Lord, the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. It's so uncomplicated without the melodrama of all the stuff that they've all the hoops and bells and whistles you got to do now that wear people down and make people feel like, you know, we're not, you know, we're in competition just for going to church or that they're so superior they can't take anybody who's not famous. And that's the difference for the sake of the humble, you know, Christ 
the Isaiah 53 Christ, the Isaiah 58 Christ, the non-celebrity packaged Jesus, all right? Non-Christian showbiz Jesus, we're here to look this way and be whatever this is for anybody that needs it, all right? So let's go through our final, our big closing of the epic, I mean an epic journey. <laughs> I could almost, <laughs> I could almost cry with the, the, the change is so good, you know, Holy Spirit. Now, Psalm 132. Oh, Psalm 132 says, and it's to, it was given to me, and give, you know, how many, eight to ten years, seven to ten years, all right, during the worst, you know, some of this stuff before here, but I still get it because there's still, you know. It says, Lord, remember David and his afflictions. Lord, remember David and his afflictions. Oh, yes, David is renowned in our point of view. He wrote all those psalms. Oh, my gosh, he's famous. He had all that wealth. He was the king of Israel. Oh, yes, we knew he had concubines. We know he, he uh, committed adultery and lost the baby. We know he did sin, so we can identify with him. You know, we can. We know all these things about David, and, man, he prospered. He's famous. He's wealthy. And he endured, and he did beautiful music. True. And he had the line of King uh, King David as the line of Obed, uh, excuse me, uh, Ruth and Naomi and all that. I can't remember right this second. Anyway, I, oh. Anyway, he's in the line of Mary to Joseph to uh, God the Father, not Joseph, but he's the line of Jesus. So we know so many good things about David. Nobody thinks often about being almost killed, living on the land, being escaped, missing the sword, the pressure, all he wanted to do, all David wanted to do at that time, before he got to where he was, he was the the, the child that the father thought, oh, he's watching the sheep. He was not even taken for seriously because the six brothers were handsome and more showable. So when the prophet came to anoint the new king and they couldn't find the king in the first brother, top brothers, he said, well, there's one more. There's one more. He's just a kid. You know, he's out there with the sheep. But that was the one. See, this is it. You can't despise. You can't be moved by type. You can't be moved. We cannot be moved by type. Because the Holy Spirit, God, is humble. Jesus was the lowly, loving, respectful. So when I'm looking, you can read through it. I'm not going to teach this whole psalm. I'm going to recall your attention to a couple of verses. It says, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, the long term, not one day, 10 weeks, long term. And here's the reason. Because he had a private relationship with God, more important than anybody else, anything else. He said, remember, oh Lord, please. Oh Lord, it's been tough. It's just fraught with anxiety. All the, all right, on the front lines of birthing something, finding the ark, a home. Lord, remember David, all his reflections, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the almighty God of Jacob, the children of Israel's father, you know. He swore to God, Lord, he said, surely, verse 3, I will not come into my tabernacle of my house. I won't even go home and have a house, nor will I go up to my bed. I'm going to do this, and you're first. I don't care if I lost it all, didn't do it, you know, didn't have all the stuff that everybody wants me to have. I didn't care. It's about you, Lord. That's the true call, you know, minister. David said he sacrificed. I will not even give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until he was top focus, top priority on what God said every day, every moment. Yeah, he had to do stuff. Yeah, it went well, but he knew. He knew a bigger picture, and he kept on going. And one day in, we, he got slammed. He had wars. He had all this stuff, rumors of wars, rumors about him. All right. And he knew it probably, but he knew more than they. All right. I will not give sleep to my eyes, slumber to my eyes. He, had de he was deprived, all right, until I found a place for the Lord, a habitation of the mighty God of Jacob, until all the foes, the invisible powers, the dysfunctional people, all this stuff was opposing him. He didn't know exactly what was going to happen or how it would happen or even what it was, but he knew that was in his spirit. It's like that old movie, you know, build it, 
if you build it, they will come. There is a knowing. There's a knowing. It's just been a knowing by grace. And you can have that too and identify with it for you. All right. It says, so he persisted valiantly. And then he said, lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the Lo, we heard of it at Ephrata, verse 6. We found it in the field of the wood. So it was in a weird place. It wasn't just carved out. He had to go through the woods. He had to clear the brush. He had to pioneer the land like an apostle, like a sent messenger, like a colony planner, almost for the Lord's Ark. You know? <laughs> uh, we will go into the tabernacle. We'll worship at his footstool. So they had to define, be sent, be pursued, be targeted repeatedly, and he didn't give up, be fatigued, almost give up, fighting dysfunctional powers that be, you know, but he didn't complain. He knew, he knew more. He just knew, and you know more than some people that are not even thinking like that, right? It says, the victory starts to happen, in my opinion. It turns, it says, lo, we first heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood, the lost ark. He says, we will go his his cave of Abdullam crowd, the misfits that rallied to him at the time, maybe. We, his peers, his cronies that were out there with him. We will go in the next move, out there with him in the next move, perhaps. <clears throat> we will tabernacles, we will worship at his footstool. I want to point out to the strict legalists. It says in this verse, which is a little humor maybe, pointed humor. David said, we will go into his tabernacles. Oh, not just one tabernacle? I'm not going to question that for the theology of this passage, but I'm thinking, does that allude that it's not a sin to go house to house, fellowshipping with the saints, and committed where God says uh, that it was not one? It was, he wasn't a church hopper. I don't know. So we will go <clears throat> in his, to his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. What's the point of all this church going? What's the point of all this religion? It ain't about pleasing the pastor. It ain't about pleasing the pope. It ain't about putting your money in the offering. It ain't about showing up <clears throat> all your skill, all your religion. It's about, oh, Lord, we're here with you. <laughs> we want you, Lord. We don't want just, a, you know, we just, we want teaching more about you, but we want you. That's it. Not fame. You. And that's David. And that's this. <clears throat> We will go up into his tabernacles. We get to go in. We don't have to go in. We want to go in. That's David. Passion for the Lord. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou in the ark of thy strength. Once you get into the presence of the Lord, you have given your strength to get there. But if in the using first church teaching of going to church, Hebrews 10, 25, what you need and what you really want, what you want to hope to find is you're going to get more strength and more rest from a message, the ministry, or the presence of the Lord. This ties in with fellowship of the saints, but this is how the sacrifice often goes on behind the scenes. Even those who are now the preacher, the lampstand leader. And this is the two verses that I would like to say, and I'm not going to teach it all, but it tells in briefly. It says, Arise, O Lord, into thy rest we get the rest. That means we cast our cares, all the trouble, the, you know, all the stress fades because the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the faith of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the deep presences of the Lord, and the teaching and the music brings us there. He comes, he visits in his invisible way, in a way. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, the ark of thy strength. I could just teach that a whole session, but I won't today. And it says this is the two big ones for the modern-day characters. I mean, the modern-day priests and pastors, popes, and whomever are out there, including me, leaders. It says, verse 9 and verse 16 go together. Verse 9, verse 16 of Psalm 132 are why... <laughs> We have dysfunction or not. We have people murmuring and complaining. And the, you know, we're not going to church. We hate it. We're smothered, whatever. And you have the pastors complaining. Oh, they're ungrateful. You know, and you have the people complaining in America. Well, two things. I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to the religious crowd in the church. 
This said, let the priests be clothed with righteousness and let the saints shout for joy. The saints are shouting for joy. They are? Where? Because why? The priest, the head pastor, the leader, the teacher, the trainer, whomever the head person is, home church, famous church, charismatic, white, black, or brown, speaking in tongues or not. All right, that's a big deal. <clears throat> so the responsibility of the teaching, the pastor, the leader, all right, <clears throat> the priest is clothed with righteousness, <clears throat> not superior, not self-righteousness, but it's by humility privately with the Lord. His or her heart is privately consecrated, respectful, value in all people, not used to it, accustomed to it. It is humble, teachable, and respectful, fear of the Lord, and then after that their heart is pure, no guile, no pretentiousness, no gall, you know, no anger, bitterness, or sin. They go out and their heart is pure before the Lord. They're clothed with God's righteousness and the Holy Spirit. They're not clothed with superior pride or fault finding or legalism, or word cursing, or our power, you know. Instead, they have that humility. It could be anybody, a servant leader. And they get up there, and it says, when they do, over and over, that keep that going as a lifestyle, and live it, private behind the scenes and out in front. It says it'll affect the people in the congregation. It says, then the people, <coughs> then the saints, <coughs> excuse me, then the saints will shout for joy. Think on these things. Train on these things. Then it skips over to verse 16. <clears throat> there are many things in between. It says, I will clothe, says the Lord, I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Demonstrative, not controlled. I, says the Lord, if they really know him, and there's some passage in between, if our signal doesn't go out, because it is sort of, all right, I will abundantly bless her provision. Yeah, that's part of it. That's not it. We're talking to verse 16. God says, I will clothe her priests if they want it, if they go near enough, if they seek the Lord first and know about this. I will clothe her priest, their priests, her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud. For, Yay! Praise and worship. All right. When you look at this verse, it also ties in with... The verse that it is, um, there, there are verses that tie into verse in the New Testament. And when we look at the yoke-breaking anointing, that's the Old Testament, but then there's no controlling. It's the balance. You have to be strong, say no, teach people authority, mutual submission, the fear of the Lord, respect them back. And I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout for joy. This is a big teaching in the days in which we live. It really is. So let's get back on this um, teaching. If I can get finished with the whole chapter, let me do it. All right. So David has had perspective, a deep walk with the Lord, ongoing. It's not all been fun, rewarding. It's been even almost to the point of being unalived. So it's worth it, though, because he knows. It's in his heart. It's worth it. It's more than this life. It's about the Lord. Verse 10, after it talks about let the saints be clothed, let the priests be clothed with righteousness and let their saints shout for joy. Oh, I know, I wanted to say this. Here's a verse that a verse about this. In Isaiah, you know, all the people grumbling and murmuring, and we don't like it, and church is boring, or church is too, you know, they're not all this stuff. It says in Isaiah 28, I believe, 28 or 29, it says. Those who erred in spirit shall come to understanding. Those who murmured shall know, shall learn doctrine. Whoa. It also means the truth. Those who murmured shall know the truth. It also means those who murmured shall know doctrine. So what? let's look at it. Or oh, the overview in America and all that's going on. What is the doctrine that would be help in training, remembering, not avoiding? I think a lot of it is about... Uh, knowing it's it isn't about membership it's about i just want to be with god i just want to be with god and his people and iron sharpens iron and the freedom to say i want to go not i have to go but it would also mean that your training is not sinful that it's not false teaching occult 
uh, keeping track of people, monitoring, keeping tabs, you know, warning people, I think they're witches and I've never thought because they look like it. They're, that is just so big. Crapology. Crapology. That is a child of, what is it? Psalm 144, train, strange children fruit. Mouths that teach vanity. It's all about us and being a seer of high, you know, or our for our turf. Turf guarding is wrong. It, it should be, you know, it's Ephesians 4 is the model. The community. Getting along, let people flow. It takes a, does it take a village to raise some children? Yes. That's an African proverb. It, people are dysfunctional. You don't want, that's why I believe right now I'm going to teach it another day. I don't want all the, I don't want it pastor. I really never went to do this, but I will because God is saying to do it. But I'm doing it differently. I said, <laughs> it's almost like, don't come if you if you are, you know, just, I will pastor by divine appointment. But it isn't to do this to be mean. It's like protective. They're that big. Might. But we are open to private counsel, to private, you know, private gatherings or whatever. We're doing it to the right people and mentoring. I've had a lot of experience, like David, with a lot of his trials that go on in certain areas in witchcraft, and especially in the big uh, included in this. It doesn't scare me a bit, but it surely is bothersome. Surely is false, and it's in our nation. And they think, oh, yeah, the society's all now going to the cult stuff. They're going to, yeah. Who's teaching correctly in these churches? Where is the true church, the real Holy Spirit? All right. I really believe no matter how I talk, I don't feel stressed. I feel like all it is is people never been trained. I feel like instead, come unto me, all you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's how, and that's the worship I have. I'd like to have that when the Lord, you know, births that again up here. So we're looking on the long haul of David as your journey, part of your journey, if you're really called to have a ministry or a business or whatever, whatever your journey is as a family. So he says, after the priests are clothed with righteousness and the saints are finally able to shout for joy, they're not all stressed, they're not all, you know, opinionated and, you know, like the top pastor. <laughs> not all of them. For the servant's David's sake, turn not away the face of thy anointed. For the servant David's choice, see, he's, in, he's lowly. This is his position. He's called, anointed, but he's lowly. He says, Lord, I still know I'm human. I still know I goof up. I still know I'm not making it unless you help me, and that's it. And I believe I might have to cut this short because it is pretty long. But you read the rest, and it talks about that do, the reward does come. And even the children who are faithful to what the father and mother teach them, in ministry will set upon you know will start, keep the covenant and keep on the the lineage going for the lord has chosen zion he's de, he has desired it for himself zion meaning the the people of israel the children of israel the temple of god in the old testament but also here in the the glory of you know the zion uh that we're all the heavenly zion type thing my opinion all right for the lord has chosen zion he has desired it for his habitation and that's the thing it goes on and probably should teach just this last half because the habitation is when you show up and the lord's glory is there is power there or it isn't and that's what the ark is and that's what a church can be a fellowship it can be when the everybody's at rest they've gotten the skill to understand how not to be scared or be dominated but they will have the rest of the lord the um peace of the lord and after that comes his habitation it isn't about the minister and the meeting it's Really, and we got to teach this. I will teach this later. It's not about the meeting and about the skill and the difficulty of holding a church and fellowship. It is about who cares who comes if God is, you know, I meant you care about the people. But it's like the goal is not showing up or getting the number of people. The goal is not to say I've got my pews filled or my quota in people or ministry or money. It says... The Lord says he's chosen Zion, the people of God, to be at rest in their thinking for his habitation. He desires to be there with them and them to welcome him in his habitation, get their hearts ready, and he will show up in the presence, peace, power, and love of the Lord. It's like Moses going to the mountain apart from anybody. You can be apart with people. He went up in Exodus 33 to get the heavenly download, the revelation. That's another part of this can't do it if you're under stress, all this fighting. 
We'll talk more later. I've run out of time. God bless you. This is Tabitha Diarcy, Senior Pastor and Senior Servant Leader of the uh, the online fellowship.us, maybe Freedom Fellowship. I haven't figured it out yet. We're getting the name, but that's what it represents. And then also Tabo Teaching Center in Fort Mill and online and in Charlotte, many places. And also our teammate university and other side. The reproving side is, uh, you know, just different things I important. We've talked on tithe lately, Levitical patriarchism, but I'm going to try to keep this more of a sermon type, you know, loosely sermon, inspirational type over here. I love you. Uh, we are pro the Old Testament, just not under the law. That brings word cursing in the New Testament days. God bless. Um, if you, when we, we're going to look for a message on this channel, on both channels, about how we, we've taught about offering and tithes, our view of it. I'll make a little one over here. There's already one over there. It's not going to frighten. I'll be honest. I'm going fr- to. It's going to be frightening, but I want to tell you that we're going to say it's about how you feel it. Uh, not feel it, but how you feel the Holy Spirit quickens you to the certain Bible verses, but we'll do it later. This is Tabitha Arce, also the founder of the movement, Cross by the Unity. God bless.